Hello and welcome to the Intro to the Linux Terminal Part 2. Today we're going to talk a little bit about user privileges, we're going to talk about sudo and the su command, and then we're going to talk about updating your Fedora or Ubuntu system. I would talk about a little bit more than that, but for most of the other systems out there, if you know how to set them up, there's a very good chance you know how to update them from the terminal. So to start off, the sudo and the su command. But before we can talk about that, we do have to talk about user privileges. There are three different types of user accounts in a Linux environment, generally speaking. You have the normal accounts, which are basically just an everyday user. Your children, your grandparents, your spouses who don't know much about the system, that's where they need to be. They don't have any sort of administrator privileges whatsoever. You've got the root account, the administrator type account, basically the person that can do whatever they want to on the system no matter what. So if they say delete every single file on the system, they can do that. Should be used with discretion, should never be logged into for more than a few seconds at a time to run a command. Well, bridging that gap, we have the sudoers group, the person who's actually a normal user, who has very limited access to the system, but with the use of a command, can become the administrator for some amount of time. So now that we've covered that, and I know that's an extremely high-level overview of it, it really didn't get into any details, but there are two main commands that we need to know as far as administrating your system. The first of which is the su command, and a lot of people think that stands for super user or switch user. According to the man page for su, it actually stands for substitute user, which does make a lot of sense, because basically what the su account does is it allows you to go from whatever account you are logged in as to whatever account you want to be. If you just type in su by itself, it will take you to the root account, because su to nothing goes to the root user. If you were to type in su space another username, for example, and you had that other user's password, you could log in as them from your own session. But for administrating the system, su would be the one you'd want to use in order to be able to do that. Now, like I said before, you really don't want to spend all that much time logged in as the root user, so instead of doing su and just having that whole root session open, there's another way you can do it. You type in su space dash c, and then in quotes you put in whatever command you want to run. We'll get to all that in just a little bit. The other command you might need to run to help administer your system is, like I said before, the sudo command. And basically what that does is say, check the sudoers file, it tells you that I'm an administrator, run this command using my administrative privileges. You have to provide it your password, it stores it for a certain amount of time, traditionally it's 15 minutes, but you can set that to be as low or as high as you'd rather it be. So once you use that sudo command, you put sudo, whatever command you want to run, and it says, as an administrator, run this. Okay, so now that we've had a little intro to the sudo and the su command, let's go ahead and go over to the screencast and we'll take a quick look at how these things perform as far as updating your system. Alright, so basically we're looking at my Fedora desktop now. The first thing I was going to show you is how to update and install new software on Fedora. So, you'll notice here I'm the JK0 user. If I wanted to, and if I really wanted to, I don't mean this that you should do this, but if you want to, you can type SU to become root. At that point, you give it your root password, and it will say root. And this is actually just telling you who you are on the system. And you'll notice this little pound symbol, as opposed to the dollar sign, the pound symbol means you're the root user now. So from here, if I wanted to update, I could, but I would rather not do that. Instead, I'm going to type exit to go back to my JK0 account. And if I want to do it this way with the, the SU instead of sudo, I can type SU space dash C space. And then in single quotes, I type in yum update. At that point, I would give it my root password, not my own password. And then it will go ahead and search the repositories for updates. Much in the same way I could do this with the sudo command, so sudo space yum space update. Yum is the command, if I hadn't mentioned, that Fedora uses to do all of their package updates and installs. From now on I'll go ahead and just use the sudo command, but just remember that you can use this su-c and then put whatever you want to in single quotes, and that says run whatever command I'm telling you as root. So basically that's how you update your system using Fedora. If I wanted to install a package instead of updating the entire system, I could do sudo space yum space install space and then whatever I'm looking to install. So let's just say I didn't know the package that I was looking for and I wanted to look it up. In this way I could actually type in yum search and then whatever I want to find. In this case I'm going to search for conky because I know on other systems I've used conky before. Well, that brings up, oh look, conky.i686, that's a system monitor for X. So I can take this conky at the beginning and install it from there. And now to install it, we would actually type in sudo yum install and then whatever part comes before the period, so conky. 
and that will actually go out, pull down Conky and all of the dependencies that it requires. There we go, it searched through all of the repositories and it found Conky and a bunch of libraries to go along with it. It tells you the version number, the arch architecture that you're actually running on, what repository it's pulling from, size information, what it's installing, lots and lots of info there. Now if I go ahead and hit yes here, this will go ahead and download all the packages and install them for me without me having to do any extra work. And there we go, Conky is installed. Just so you can see it, Conky is a great application. If I type Conky right now, this will actually bring up Conky on my system. I do have a different layout than the default, but this just shows you what it can be used for to, to tell you all of your system information. Just thought that was kind of cool, thought I'd mention it. Okay, so now I've cleared the screen. If I want to go ahead and uninstall an application, much in the same way as I installed it, I would say sudo yum remove or erase, depending on what you'd rather do, and then whatever the application name was that I installed. So Conky. And what that will do is it will find the application I want to remove, give all the information on it, and say, is this okay? Do you want to do this? Hit Y and enter, and it will go ahead and remove it for you. Now you'll notice that didn't remove all the dependencies that it installed along with it. I've been looking around, it doesn't appear that yum actually supports auto-removing all of the, the extra dependencies. That's perfectly fine though, because yum has one thing that really is on its side, and that's the history command. So now if I do a sudo yum history, this will tell me all of the things that I've installed and uninstalled in the past. You'll see here the different IDs, who actually did it, the date and time, and what was done. So basically what I could do here, if I wanted to, instead of erasing the application, I could undo this installation. You see there were six items that were altered, whereas the erase only removed one. Well if instead I did a sudo yum history undo and then the ID, which in this case is 35, it will go through and say, this is the difference between where you are now and where you were before you did this transaction. Let's go ahead and remove these packages. So this is a way to auto-remove the packages that you don't want anymore if you can remember the history on that. Now if you don't know what each of these history items are, you can actually do a sudo yum history and then info and the ID to find out information on what has happened. So info on 35. So the history here shows that it installed five dependencies and then the application itself. And we'll notice if I do sudo yum history info 37, that's the one where I just rolled it back, it erased these five packages that were dependencies. Just throwing that out there, I don't know if you'll actually use the history command, but it is a very powerful tool and one that I really enjoy having on Fedora. So basically that's installing, updating, and removing software on Fedora and using the history tool to roll back. Let's talk about how you do it on Ubuntu. Now as I've said, I'm on Fedora right now, but we can still look at the way you do it on Ubuntu because Fedora has the apt-git tool available. So I've gone ahead and installed that. Now if I were to run apt-git update right now without having administrative privileges, it's going to say no. It's going to say unable to lock the directory, permission denied. Basically you are not an administrative user, you're not allowed to do this. Now, in order to fix that, of course, you either do su-c and then the command, or you can do it with sudo. So, in my case, I just like to do sudo, sudo apt-get update. So, what it's going to do is go out and check all of the Fedora repositories in this case. If you were on Ubuntu, it would go out and check the Ubuntu repositories to see if there are any updates available. Now, one thing I would like to mention right here, it is really not recommended to mix. So on a system like I'm on right now, I've been using yum for a long time. I don't want to switch over to using apt. But for the sake of just showing it off in this tutorial, I will use it for the moment. But now that I've run that update, if I were to type sudo apt git upgrade, this will actually go out and search those repositories to pull down everything that's, uh, that's available to upgrade. As you've seen, there's nothing available to update. There wasn't anything from yum update earlier, so I wouldn't expect anything here now. Now, if you remember correctly, I went ahead and removed Conky, so let's go ahead and try to install it using apt-get. Uh, just for example, let's say I don't know the package name. In this case, I would type in apt-cache, C-A-C-H-E, space, search, and then whatever I want to look for. In this case, Conky, C-O-N-K-Y. And there we go, it tells me the package name and the information about it. From there I can type in sudo apt git install conky and actually have it pull down conky and all of its packages that it requires. Here we go, different packages that are required, new packages to install, how much space it's going to take and all of that fun stuff. Not going to do that quite at the moment just because I don't want to, to intermingle. But in the exact same way, sudo apt git remove conky would go out and say remove conky but it leaves all those dependencies out there. Now since I don't have it installed, it's not actually going to work. 
and just to throw this on there, if you did remove Conky and it just removed Conky itself, didn't actually remove any of the additional dependencies, it will tell you while it's removing it, these other items are going to be left orphaned. If you want to remove them, run sudo apt git auto remove. And that will automatically remove any dependencies left on your system. So that's updating, upgrading, installing software, removing software, and automatically cleaning up the unused packages. I think that's just about it on installing, updating your system, running using sudo or su, and just learning a little bit about the user administrator roles on the system. So that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.